Oh boy, we're about to review some Dookies in Green Dead's discography. Dookie of course indicating to their classic Dookie album. Which is uh, pretty much the best pop punk album out there if you want to make that claim, you know. But it's still the best I suppose, so there we go. Big fan of their 90s output. Uh, Warning is a great album too, I think. American Idiot is pretty much my favorite. 21st Century Breakdown is, uh, is kind of like a personal favorite of mine. So I was in store, I was very um, excited to look up what the, the guys were going to do next because I like all of those projects. And they released a trilogy album named Uno Dos Tres, which uh, was reviewed by Crash the Rock Critic by uh, Alex of Ministry of Music and probably some other people but those are the main two um, I, I think ARTV loves, loves this stuff so it's Green Day so there we go it's his favorite band so of course he's biased about it uh, so overall I didn't really listen to, this al to these albums I've heard some singles which were pretty bad in my opinion but uh, overall I didn't really hear these albums upon, upon release so there we go and probably like I've seen the track listing of DOS. I haven't really seen anything of Trey though. I believe there's like a Seppi ballad on Trey, I'm not sure. With uh, the Twilight chick in the music video, which was kind of weird. I think that it's on Trey because I didn't hear it on Uno. And I don't think it's on DOS, so it's probably on Trey. Um, and I see what they did there because Trey, you know, Trey the, the third album. The drummer is called Trey Cool, so of course he gets Trey. That you know, that was pretty much like an obvious, uh, an obvious one. So there we go. Laziest title ever, probably, but it is. You know, it is what it is. Um, yeah. So this album it didn't really do a lot for me. I can't really make this too long of an album review because. What is there to say about this album? It's pretty straightforward. It didn't really do a lot for me. Uh, let's go to the track listing a bit. This was released in 2012. It, all, all the three records are basically uh, power pop, pop punk, punk records. You know, mostly uh, power pop. So there we go. Power pop, uh, pop punk. Yeah, pop punk, punk rock, I suppose. So there we go. All the songs are three minutes long, so they're two minutes, and uh, there's one song that is four minutes, and there's one song that's actually five minutes, so there we go. Uh, yeah, you know, most of these songs don't really speak to me. Nuclear Family was pretty straightforward. I believe there was like a counting down thing going on, which really annoyed the shit out of me. And if it wasn't on Nuclear Family, it was on State and I, which was kind of dreadful, I suppose. It's All of these songs are not really like terrible but they're just so average you know they're just so middle of the road i suppose um carpe diem is actually a really fun song i think this song was uh three and a half minutes and i think there were some really fun hooky riffs in carpe diem really fun to listen to this one um jeff shedbolt was riffing on this one and i did really enjoy his performance on there so this was a good song, this is pretty much my, my favorite song on the record, but you know, that is of course the battle. Because the riffs are really clean, uh, really or clean, they are really rocking and really like punk rock, classic Green Day, so I love that. Uh, then we get Let Yourself Go, and honestly this was one of the main singles, but I didn't really see the, see the appeal. It was pretty bland, pretty forgettable, 2 minutes and 57 seconds. So it was not really for me, but if it's, if it's one of your favorite singles of this era, then there you go. Uh, speaking of singles, we have Kill the DJ, which is arguably the most popular song, you know. Arguably of the whole trilogy. Uh, this song is abysmal. Um, the riffs, uh, to the, to, you know, it's a really boring, repetitive riff. It kind of sounds like automatic stop by the strokes or something, or one of those riffs, you know, kind of like. To the, to, it's very stationary, but what I love about that stroke riff is that it sounds very electric and very lively. Whereas Kill the DJ just sounds like a formulaic, bland, boring, straightforward riff. It just sounds boring to me, um, Kill the DJ. I, I get what they're saying. They're saying, oh, uh, EDM is crap, Kill the DJ. 
But the, ironically, the song sounds like a fucking uh, EDM song. So, yeah, uh, Green Day kind of sh shot themselves in the foot right there because I'm not a huge fan of the song, uh, or they shoot themselves in the foot, foot in the foot here that because it sounds electronic to me. It sounds badly produced. It sounds poppy. It sounds mainstream because it is. So Green Day did kind of shoot themselves in the foot right there. So yeah, not a good job, Green Day. Pretty much the worst track on air. So there we go. And then we got Fell for You. Um, Fell for You, Loss of Control, Troublemaker, all kind of same. Honestly, uh, I can go in depth about them, but they're just so boring and forgettable that I just don't like to talk about them. Fell for You and Loss of Control, especially because. Uh, Loss of Control has a, a feature with Chrissy uh, Hind and James Honeyman Scott who are I believe a couple I think because that's why it sounds so fucking uh, sappy Fellview is, is of course uh, sappy it sounds like uh, Billy Joe is kind of like trying to have a relationship or something or relationship advice you know uh, to teach the kids the birds and the bees but it just doesn't work out for me Send a piece of the record and it's Underwhelming as fuck, honestly. So there we go. Uh, yeah, then we, get, then we get Angel Blue, which was one of the surprises, I think. Uh, this was a very interesting track. It was very mellow and very cool, and still kind of like in the power pop sense, but it wasn't really like punk rock. It was more pop, poppy and uh, punky in a way. If punky is a way, it sounds really gay, but it was more power pop, punk ish, I would say. It is kind of like on a romantic kind of cute side but it's not in that fell for you you know gay ass fucking uh bland generic boring side it's actually kind of sincere it sounds genuine so this is probably uh also one of my favorite songs uh then we got sweet 16 which is a pretty straightforward song uh doesn't really you know it's pretty much like a lot of control troublemaker kind of song fell for you but a bit catchier the hooks are a bit more in place uh the song is a bit more rhythmic i would say uh, it's just a slightly better song, but I would say if you got if you, if you get like a D plus at the at the mid side of the record, and you get one song that is exactly the same, but it's a C minus. You know, why didn't have that C minus in the first place, or why you know don't make it in a fucking B grade or something? I I don't know, but it's you know Sweet Sixteen. It should have been on the record way earlier and a bit better in my opinion because sweet 16 is a solid song but it's just not it just doesn't do anything for me honestly it doesn't save the record uh then we then we get rusty james which is arguably the most generic song on the record it's four minutes long it's pretty straightforward uh just think about every punk band ever that's how the song sounds to me it's just pretty straightforward riffs are okay you know it sounds like you know, the thing is with this whole record, it sounds like classic Green Day in some places. Uh, the You know, the beginning side and um, fucking Rusty James. It sounds like classic Green Day, but it doesn't have that poppy, that fine-tuned pop sensibility that I love about the band. I love Green Day, that, you know, um, that's punk rock style of them with that catchy poppy melody that they have you know the the fucking dookie and nimrod and warning american idiot i love that green day because you know even fucking 21st century breakdown in a way it is it is a bit straightforward but at least those albums have the pop sensibility they have the they have the songwriting craft they spice it up a bit you know outside of 21st century breakdown but all of those records mix it up in some way you know green day did evolve on most of the record, most of the record, because most people said, "Oh, Green Day is you know a stationary. They are a one-note band, and Green Day wanted to prove them wrong, and that's what they did with every subsequent release up until twenty-first. Uh, and then they pretty much you know uh, wanted to throw it back a bit, and they failed miserably with this trilogy right here. So there you go. <coughs> and <coughs> oh, sorry." And I'm speaking of this now because um, Green Day really tries to throw it back with Olaf, which is the closest thing to a classic Green Day song that we got on this record. Uh, you have the, the kind of like stationary drums, Olaf, tr 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 Olaf. 
Um, that's a bit boring, I would say. The song does pick up after, you know, uh, it is set. I do really like the chorus. Uh, go away, go away, da -da -da -da, love, oh my, dear love. You know, I do really like that chorus right there. It's a pretty catchy chord. But, and I even agree with the song. Go, I believe they say go away. And I definitely agree with that because he, uh, Uno is bona fide hot garbage. It's trash. Well, it's it's not trash, but it's just so middle of the road. All of these songs are so average. Uh, one song is absolute god awful, and one song is pretty good. Uh, those being the two singles, "Kill the DJ" is hot trash, and "Oh Love" is pretty good in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I, I do understand why the why Green Day uh, chooses to pick "Oh Love" as the last song on the record because it is pretty much the best song on the album, but. It is kind of weird because it is the lead single of the record and it is the last song on the album. Like, what? Why? I, I get that Nuclear Family is an appropriate opening for like a classic Green Day sound, but I don't get why Olaf, the lead fucking single of this album, is the last song on the record. I, I don't get that, but you know, uh, Green Day wants to end on a strong note and they ended on like a C. Plus b minus kind of track you know still pretty much the best rating i could give to this record right there and i'm gonna give it that i'm gonna give it a uh pretty much a c minus i'm gonna give it a 5.7 mainly because the whole record is average with one above average track and one god awful track so that kind of tears it down a little bit and brings it up a bit but just not enough so that's my opinion about uh, you know uh, I believe Alice Gate is a two. I mean it's just it's not good but it's not terrible. So give it a chance. I think it's pretty solid. You know uh, what do you think about the uh, Uno Dos Trash trilogy? I believe there are some god awful songs on Dos, so we're gonna check those out in a bit. Uh, Uno is okay in my book um i don't have to ever hear this again in my life because i was really underwhelmed with this record but you know i won't say if it comes on i don't mind but 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 i mean the standards for modern modern music are so god awful that i probably wouldn't mind this to be you know if this would play i wouldn't mind that because it is green day you know, because the stands of today are so fucking god awful that this would be like, this would be like the fucking Beatles in my ear. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's my opinion. But you know, to compare anything to to today's music is a bit unfair. So I still wouldn't like. I still would probably avoid this because it's pretty bad. It's you know, it's it's middle of the road Green Day. It's it's it is about to get worse because uh, there's a one track on DOS that has like. It's, it's such a lifeless fucking song. I'm not gonna spoil it yet, but that track that I heard from that record is, is like the worst song I've ever heard from the band. And I believe it is the worst rated track of the, uh, of, of, of the whole Green Day discography. It is called the worst Green Day song of all time. So I'm in for a treat. Uh, thank, you for watching the, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about the Uno Dos Tres trilogy from Green Day. Uh, Uno, it's... Not as bad as I thought it would be, but it's still pretty middle of the road. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think about um, the trilogy, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, yeah, peace. Like, comment, subscribe if you didn't say it already, and see you.